they never say a word. I mean, they may say something, but they've never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any additional compensation, you know, when you were going to, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Thursday, and then alternating Fridays, what you're doing now, I think. Um, is you know the people that get to stay home, mm -hmm. and then those people that don't get to stay home. Or is there any compensation for that? We were able to over offer them some overtime, sir. On Fridays. On Fridays. Every Friday, they get time and a half. They get overtime because they were working the additional days right. and having to deal with uh, a lot of issues that we really don't expect at this time of year. So they on a Friday, it's just like when they work a holiday. Right. That's how we get that. And, they, and Mr. King said he was he thought that helped a lot too. We did that at both landfills because of that fact and to try to retain employees uh, Truck drivers in those kind of fields right now equipment operators are in high demand So we was trying to help a little boost there and do that And so I'm very thankful Wayne did look at their salary. I mean they I mean, I, I mean he really worked, worked on those ones. I mean that they needed it Yes, so, well you say you got you get merit raises up until what you what the middle of the of the uh, well till you get up into your scale where we fit scale yeah. yes sir so we're working towards that okay i do not know whether they have hand sanitizers in each truck i think they do but uh, we can check with john but i'm not sure on that one uh, i probably should have had that before later yeah they call them could be supplied. Yes, sir. I think uh, John got him some. Okay. <clears throat> uh, building grounds. Uh, fuel, we lowered uh, 30,000 the propane. Uh, last few years, we've had, last year, uh, we had a very good year. But uh, we lowered that down 50,000 all told. First it was 30, and then I come back and cut some more. Propane is down, uh, so hopefully it'll stay. Time will tell, and hopefully we'll have a, a mild winter. Hopefully. Uh, you know, mild winter also makes a huge difference. Our electric contract uh, is, is, it was high last year. Uh, it was hotter during the, the summer, so the air conditioning was up. We just don't really know on that one. And it's fairly close every year. Back and forth. So those are the only changes, really. Um, page 37, contribution to the health department, no changes. We are meeting their requested amount, which is the same amount we've given them for years. Uh, Southside Health District, I mean, I'm sorry, Southside Community Services Board, they did request an increase of almost, well, of uh, 55000 um, which is about a third. Uh, they felt that they were going to get the money. Then we came back and Beth said, no, we don't think we're going to probably get that. And actually last Thursday, she sent back an email that said they were requesting the full amount of what they had in there. Staff is recommending no increase this year. They can get a waiver from the state. I have spoken to Brunswick, who also funds it at 100%. They're not giving any increase either. Halifax has never been at 100%, so they've always had to get the waiver for a number of years they have been increasing theirs about ten thousand a year uh but they will not be up to what theirs was either so none of the three counties are going to fund them fully this year uh, so staff's recommending that we'll work on that next year again some of this was we got to see how bad this is going to be for all of us don't really know uh welfare board no changes Tri County, there is a ten thousand dollar increase. This is page forty. Uh, that was per our discussions that the committee had had with regards to the shelter that y'all wanted to fund. No changes on page forty-one. <coughs> Lake Country <coughs> Agency on Aging (CSA) personnel, page forty-two, or community colleges on forty-three. <coughs> 44, uh, slight increases to a couple of ball fields is all. Um, and an increase uh, to South Hill to 1250, making them the same as Clarksville for the game, for the Little Leagues. Uh, under Preservation of Historic Sites, page 45, 
We were requested for additional money from McCullough Moore. Uh, we're not funding that this year. We're going to continue them at the same rate. That's all at this one. That's Page 46. Library. No changes. Page 47. Planning Commission. No changes. Page 48. Uh, the grant to Transtex. This is a tobacco grant. So that's money in, money out. Page 49, no change to the Planning District Commission. Page 50, no changes on that at this time. Hopefully, this will not. We are still seeing some discussions with people. Uh, site visits, of course, have ended for the time being. Uh, but hopefully that will be coming back over the next few months uh, with some announcements based upon previous site visits. Um, tourism, there is an increase in their advertising by five. Uh, that is for the TAP Mecklenburg campaign. Hopefully that will come back over the summer. Uh, you all are aware that Tina did the uh, other campaign with the uh, cards. I think uh, she is trying to keep in touch with everyone. She has started updating our Facebook page, etc. So we are looking at that. It's probably going into our office, please. So we don't have that interruption that I want to. Um, welcome all those that are joining us. We're, we're back the at the live beginning. stream. Yeah. We are still in that mode. Hi, okay. Uh, <laughs> no problem, sir. I was glad to sit back. Uh, we have, uh, but Tina's been doing the uh, gift cards, and that's been going well, and she'll be doing some other items also. Where, she you, where is, do you buy this? Uh, you the Chambers. Chambers. Yes, sir. Uh, they have it broken up into the three zones, Chase City, Clarksville, and South Hill. Uh, you can contact them and those businesses that are participating. And no matter where you buy it, this all the businesses that participate, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. The ones listed that are great. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're just selling them in those locations, trying to break it up by region. Just made sense. It was easier that way. We had to do something. Yeah. So uh, okay. Airports. Uh, we did fund the regular amounts. I did not have the Clarksville Airport any funding for new construction this year. Uh, I know they had wanted to do it phase two of their capital. Mike and I played phone tag a little bit, but I don't see there's any way we can do that this year. Uh, also, I know the state has cut back a lot of funding, and most localities are cutting out other additional capital projects that have not already begun. So they might have to wait a year on the funding for this. There was any additional funding for the insurance? They had a yes, sir. I did have the money the for the funding. Yes, sir. That did increase for the insurance, uh, and you can see that in their amount. They used to get 39, it was 42,150 covers it now. So we did cover the insurance, but I just couldn't add on to the operating costs this year based upon the current situation. Okay, next, zoning administrator, no changes. No changes on soil and water, page 54. The only amount of this that is ours is the 15,500. Uh, the rest is all reimbursed by the Soil and Water Conservation District. And Judy, uh, Sandra, Ed, any of y'all want to chime in at any time? Uh, next page, uh, we cancel. We did pay that last year. Uh, we will be paying that again uh, because of the Lingbia. Uh, those costs are going up. Uh, Rock River Basin Association, page 56, no changes. That's another one of those organizations that I said when we need them, they're there. Uh, VPI extension, uh, this is the same monies as last year, although on page 58, I did cut 2500 from the Ag Development Committee, Mr. Jennings. We never spend it every spend year. It anyway. So I cut that back too, but yes, everybody got to share something. Uh, no other changes through 4-H, which takes you through page 62, which uh, that is the grant that is reimbursable to us. Fixed charges, page 63. Okay. We have a number of changes. 
And all these uh, were on the insurance side. Uh, if you look, our unemployment stayed the same, but our liability and workman's comp went up. Our rescue squad disability went up. Uh, fire dropped a little bit. Line of duty went up. Uh, we don't. Line of duty was one of those things we were waiting on. We didn't get insurance till two weeks ago, maybe. Um, because line of duty, they were trying to figure out how this is going to affect it based upon the new changes to the workman's comp laws from the General Assembly this year. They go in effect July 1. Multipurpose is cut back uh, 40000 One major item we pay out of that is the money to the hospital, the 50000 there. Uh, let's see. Page 68, industrial stimulus grant refund. Uh, that has increased. That is also, uh, we do keep part of that. So. Town of Boynton, they had requested $20,000 more. I was not able, and I had to make some cuts throughout, uh, Mr. Spain, and that was one of those cuts that uh, currently we had to make for this year. Hopefully <coughs> next year we might be able to do something for them. Uh, transfers. Uh, page 71. Roof replacement, uh, we continue to fund that. One of the things that staff is going to recommend is we probably rename this line item. Um, in the current school construction, we have two funds that y'all set aside monies for 10 years ago and then five years ago for school construction. One was the school facility fund and one was the debt service for the school facility fund. Those were always discussed as being used for part of our down payment for the school out of the 24 million that we have to pay, 27 million, sorry, uh, that we have to pay. Um, so we are going to be using those over the next year and a half. Uh, spoken to Mr. Nichols about that. What we're looking at doing is probably renaming what was the roof replacement fund. Uh, that being because all the roofs have been uh, sealed or we'll have new roofs uh, as we move forward with the elementaries. Those will have new roofs. The oldest facility we have is South Hill Elementary, which is 15, but it just got sealed last year, which should give us another 20 years. Correct. Right. So with that said, we're looking at this becoming their new capital fund. It's got a little over $3 million. Uh, as we're continuing to build schools, South Hill will possibly be the only one, but I think we're still funding it uh, for capital. Plus this would where their additional, at funds left over at the end of the year, their carryover would go into that uh, and not be commingled back and forth, especially this year based upon the fact that we're not sure, but they should have a fairly good size carryover. And we're not trying to take that for the new school construction. I've always tried to make that abundantly clear, but this gives them a nest egg to start with of over $3 million to pay for capital needs in the future. I don't think we can just continue to do back and forth. We really need to try to separate as much as possible. Uh, OPEB is down uh, this year based upon how the market had been. Uh, request for the actuarial probably won't be as good next year, two years from now, but we'll use this as the time we got. Uh, transfer to VPA is the same amount. Uh, transfer to CSA, this is your local share of the 2.2 million in the CSA budget, our 22% is 506. Uh, schools, what I am proposing here is an additional funding for the debt service uh, only uh, and no additional for operations. Uh, the school system is going to be getting a little over 1.3 million additional funds in state funding uh, from what they had this year. Uh, theirs is going to increase. We'll probably have to have a supplemental later on in the year because they're ADM was higher than they had anticipated, so they have additional funds coming in as the caboose fills up this year. Um, that is the only change I was proposing, as the $744,000 for debt service uh, for the new school, which is interest only for the upcoming year due in uh, July 15th. <coughs> Sorry, January 15th. Uh, the textbook fund, uh, that will change our numbers, that's roughly ours. What we do with the schools is we usually give them a lump sum 
amount, and then they break it back down by the categories. Some categories can't be touched because federal uh, textbook, uh, that is an escrow account, so they get to keep on that, and food services, correct? And of course, debt service. So, um, capital outlay, transfer to, we're happy to see that number go up. Uh, actually, that is the taxes we get from the Atlantic Coast Pipeline pipe that is stored at the old Burlington site and all the valves that are stored up at the old Kimgen Distribution Center. So we got them for one more year. Uh, that's that's a that's very nice. Uh, uh, that started uh, th several years ago. Uh, Mr. Taylor, want to thank him for his work on that because he saw that we were able to go back to them and get those funds. Uh, it also helps the town of Clarksville greatly. Um, they get about two thirds of this amount because they don't get what's in Kennerton, but they get all the pipe. So they also get their taxes down there too. Uh, we're not counting this long term because someday this pipeline will be built and the pipe will go away. So when that happens, this is why we're just moving it to, to the capital for the time being. DPA exp uh, expenses, the increase there is from the state. Uh, the state did a salary adjustment based upon a request by the county last August. Um, those salaries changed. There was an increase in the state funding. We are still currently, as you saw, giving them the same amount of money. They were using some of our money to match that, but we were able to bring those salaries up. As we discussed last year, we were very concerned that salary for a four-year degree uh, social worker was several thousand dollars less than a four-year <coughs> same degree for a teacher. Both of them had a BS degree. We felt that they both should be tried to be paid. Social services had been very much lower, so we were able to bring those up last year. But that's already their current salaries. No increases on that. Foster care uh, and other wraparound services for CSA, there's no changes there. Uh, currently, we have ended payment as of Friday for uh, daycare students uh, because their IEPs were not being met. In case any of you get a call, their IEPs will not be met. So uh, the CPMT board voted uh, to stop paying services or at least request a, a discount. They would not do that discount, so therefore we have ended those payment of those services. Uh, next, from there on, you have the uh, school line item, which is the additional sheet. <laughs> Fifty-seven million. Here we go. Uh, Fifty-seven million five hundred and sixty-five thousand sixty-eight dollars. That does take in to uh, the uh, additional 1.3 million in state funding over last year, and then the additional 774,000 and some odd dollars for the debt service from this year for our, the new school for the additional 35 million. What page are you on? That one, those sheets are not included because we don't have the breakdown. We'll have to get those once you're off. Huh? I'm over here looking for it. Yeah, it's yeah. actually on the on the cover sheet. Can you show it? We don't on my face on scrolling through my computer. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we did not include those because they have to be redone by the school system uh, based upon we have always, in the 30 years I've been here, we have only approved a budget in lump one year, and that was in the late 90s, and the board was not really pleased with how money's got moved around, so they've always done it by category. There are seven categories that you can do it in, uh, and those the school board usually, uh, they, we let them break those out as, as to they see fit. There is no increase for the step in this year's budget to them. Uh, the step, hold on, let me find it. Here we go. Uh, the school board originally had requested an additional $2,728,406, of which 1.824 was Debt service, that was an incorrect number. That was the number from the second year that Christy had gotten. It should have been 744,692, which would have been an increase of $1,648,423, of which 903,000 of that was for the local requirement for a step. Um, 
I spoke with the superintendent and told him, based upon the economy and double digit unemployment, that there's no way that staff could support uh, across the board pay increase. Uh, we just didn't feel like this was the time uh, when you've got, you could be up to 20% they're saying next month uh, by the time May's figures come in. Uh, so by, with that looking at it, staff just did not feel that that was appropriate at this time. And looking at other counties, our neighboring counties are flat funding except for Halifax, which cut 450 or 540. I can't remember. They, they, they cut their budget, uh, school budget, by I think 540,000. Uh, they're the only ones I know that cut, but everybody else, to the best of my knowledge, flat funded uh, school systems around. Uh, that's the general fund budget. If you have any questions on that. Let me have a second to move all the papers around. Okay. Next, we'll go into the fund budget. Uh, most of these, in many cases, are just funds set aside. Uh, some we have existing projects for, some not. Uh, now in one reserve right now, uh, we are looking at a generator uh, and the emergency fire dispatch. Uh, so generator is 50,000 and emergency fire dispatch to 75. Our generator did die in a storm about three months ago, Mr. Argro. And uh, we have been leasing one since, uh, but uh, we are looking at purchasing again because the lease versus purchase of paybacks enough that we feel like we'd be better off to, to purchase one to do a full facility. The last one was not, uh, but the last one had been in since we opened in 95. Uh, so therefore, it didn't know us much. Uh, so we were happy on that. Uh, we'll move forward on that. Uh, landfill expense, no projects at this time at the old landfill. Uh, that is the amount we've kept. Uh, we worked, did have a project last year working on one of the uh, uh, leachate tanks. School capital cost. I have reviewed uh, the school, and I think I sent it to you all, the uh, schools capital improvement project plan and what we looked at on all of those of this year I don't believe we need to do anything to any of the existing elementaries uh, as you all have stated one of the things in the school board budget that they would like to do in this budget which we will be funding uh, or proposing um, which would be the architectural study for the elementaries so they can start figuring out what they need uh, they've got 120,000 set aside for that. We're approving the emergency contingency of 50. Uh, there are several that we think could be paid for out of this year's budget. Uh, but, um, for example, the uh, purchase of the active panels, they ought to have less money in administration and cost. Also, the allowance for painting cars and cameras for the buses. Hopefully, they'll have money in their budget uh, left over because they're not having to transport students to get that done. Uh, spoken to both Christy and Paul on that. Uh, her only concern was trying to get that approved and completed by June, uh, based upon the fact that it's mid-May and they've only got two more meetings. Um, but her main also was, could they then carry that over, their carryover funds that they don't use? And I said we would, uh, staff would recommend that. So we're, if you look, we're recommending $416,010, which is not paying for the cameras because we felt like they could be done out of uh, the existing budget. Uh, next, the next few, uh, we really are sheriff's money. Page 91, which is the Lifesaver funds. It's all in that. Uh, public safety, this is what he does with his golf tournament that he then uses for Christmas, et cetera, uh, for his public safety and public awareness. Page 93, abandoned property, 
again, 2077. Then we have our library's monies. These are monies that we hold as the physical agent for the four library systems. Uh, this is what they have currently in their account. Uh, actually, the library, the friends of the library boards handle those funds in those cases. Equipment replacement fund. Uh, we have several items in that, uh, not two of which is a new uh, truck uh, for Mr. King at the landfill. We have about 155000 in equipment for Alex at, for different computers, uh, et cetera, on that. And we have several other items to make up the four hundred, the 500000 Um Next, economic development. Uh, we have some monies in here. Uh, industrial site residence uh, expense. We want to do a study at Kinderton. We're going to apply for some tobacco grant funds, but to get that from a tier three to a tier four. Uh, and then um, we want to do a waterline study to see what's needed uh, to continue a development on the Roanoke River Service Authority system back this way. Uh, when it was originally designed, the system was designed for all the growth to go towards the east. Um, since the system went in, all the growth has gone to the west. Um, with first between Boynton being added, uh, the existing uh, Microsoft campus, Chase City, everything has grown this way. Nothing really has grown that way. Uh, so we're having to relook at probably another booster, sta a booster station somewhere between Big Fork and Boynton. Uh, to continue to keep the flows going this way. The pipeline's big enough, the capacity's at the plant, but uh, we're looking at that. Um, we do have funds in here for Herbert Drive. We do expect that to be completed this year. Roughly half of that money is reimbursed from the state for uh, revenue sharing. Uh, Olcox, similarly, we should get design complete. If design is complete, being reviewed, we'll start on right away acquisitions on that one. And then we have additional funds for the prison site. Uh, that is for the water and sewer lines going in out there. It's an estimate based upon how far we think they'll be by the end of June. Next, we have several forfeiture monies. Next four pages, Commonwealth attorneys, sheriffs, <clears throat> state unawarded, and federal. Finally, uh, small amounts that the sheriff's office confiscates. Next, uh, you have the uh, new high school complex. This is funds from the 2018 and 2019 bonds. Uh, that's what's remaining in there. Uh, whether it all gets spent in this year, uh, upcoming year, we don't know, but we just go ahead and fund that so we don't have to do a supplemental. Uh, we did receive our 35 million Friday afternoon. Uh, so that came through. Uh, so uh, we do have all the funding sources in place. We did have it at 2.9%, uh, uh, no, 8%, and uh, we were very pleased with that. So that's a 20-year 20, 20 note. The first one was a 30-year note. The second one was a 25 Um. <coughs> Let's see how some of my pages got mixed up. Okay. Uh, next, you got the Hudgens Court parking lot. That is what we expect to be remaining. I did go by there today. They have got some of the manholes in. Um, that is all. Uh, they do have some pipe. Um, fair amount of the uh, parking lot has been graded. Uh, they've got the step down. Uh, they are continuing to work out there. I don't think they'll have paving done by July 1, but we'll see, uh, but they are moving forward. Uh, miscellaneous, this amount we usually put in convenient construction center. Uh, it's basically two years worth of money. We've got a couple of them we need to work on. We need to build the one at Penn Road and the one at, down at the uh, trading post area. Uh, those are both in here for this scheduled amount. We do need to, the committee will discuss as we go out to bid on this, um, we're looking at either paving the Penn Road site. Uh, none of the ones we have existing are paving. So it makes for longer term maintenance care, plus trying to get it 
fly out, things like that is a lot more difficult at these sites if they're unpaved. There's a gravel one. Uh, so in many cases, we have not been able to open them uh, in a timely manner after a snow. So we're looking at do upgrading that and doing that in the future to these uh, two. Um, we'll probably then be looking also at different engineering for a new one, probably down in the Bracey area would be our next area that staff would look at probably trying to put it in a large convenience zone. <clears throat> uh, so uh, building grounds capital outlay. We have several different projects on that, uh, including the library. Uh, so those are funds left over from several different projects. Transfer to, let me find my sheet over here. Uh, did we pass the outlay for the uh, solid waste? That's convenience on sites. Yes, sir. That's the 750. 750, and that's um, that should I mean, do we at least. Two that we're yes, we got on board this year. That's what year. we're trying for. Two this year. Okay. Uh, and those would be the Penn Road and Trading Post area. Uh, some of the projects uh, for capital outlay, building grounds. Let me get over to that sheet. <coughs> some of these are not exactly in the right order. Okay, uh, we have the Bruce Library. Also in there is the $850,000 for Buckhorn Elementary. Um, it's an estimate. Uh, we don't know how much it's gonna cost. We have been holding up on that. Uh, I think this is high, but we, it is, I don't have to do uh, a supplemental. Um, we are looking at recycling as much of that building as possible uh, and not having it just dumped in. Are gonna run that much more? I don't, hope not. Yeah. Um, but you've got some things that have to be taken to the landfill. All that insulation and roofing material has got to go to the landfill. Um, that's forty dollars a ton, and trucking it from Buckhorn there. Uh, the remaining cost—I mean, they will recycle out the steel, concrete block, just probably like they did. What we're envisioning is requiring that, like they did at the prison. Um, but it's going to be a lot of hauling of, of other materials, uh, and those crushers are expensive to run. We used one at the landfill just for rock, and uh, they're very expensive to run uh, last year. So, um, but we need to take care of it. It's uh, the roof is shot. All that insulation is soaking wet. Uh, so it, it there's a lot of weight in that. Yeah. So. like the end of the year, possibly. I've held up on that one just because, for one reason, uh, reading a jobs report this morning, um, construction industry lost about a million employees over. The last month, uh, they're expecting that to continue in some ways. There's a lot of stuff though in the pipeline, and but I don't know how much is going to be bid in the future in the pipeline. Um, most people are very scared because of the economy. Um, local governments and the states that I've read about all are putting off all capital projects that are not currently under contract and trying to figure out how they can slow up the ones that they have under contract. Um, so I'm hoping that if we wait a little bit, we might have a better bidding atmosphere than right now. Everybody right now is still slammed with work, but I'm not sure how slammed they'll be in three to six months. So that is still hopefully at the end of the year, but that's the reason behind why our staff has put this off. At this point, I think we might can save money. I don't think it'll cost us any because as people finish up. I know you'd like to see that down, but. And, and we'll see. Uh, well, what are you going to do with the property? Uh, staff is recommending reseed it, and the uh, county just keep it at this time. Um, it's only 11 acres. In all honesty, you're not going to get much for it from someone. I agree. But down the road, I guarantee you, you're going to need it. Uh, every time we've ever gotten rid of a piece of property, it, it took a while, but down the road, we ended up needing yeah, it back. Is that a... Um, Location for convenience zone? Or it not? could be. I'm, I'm not sure because it is out somewhat remotely yeah. done. Um, and most of them we're trying to put on primary roads versus that one. Yeah, I understand. Um, we'll see. 
as, as we go along? If so, that would be a number of years, but that is a, that is a possibility. And that's why I said, you know, you could have it bush hog twice a year, and that would be a lot better than having to go out and purchase land 15, 20 years from now. Well, you got one at Park View there. That still ends but what, three or four miles down the road. Yes, sir. And we were trying to keep them at least – actually, so you didn't have to drive more than five miles each way. So – Literally, probably the one at the landfill would be a bigger, one, better place to put one in because it's half a mile off of 58 versus that one's yeah. two miles back in the I mean, that was the only thing yeah. immediate I can think of. I would just, you know, you never know. It might be a place where you would want to put a tower uh, for you all part of emergency services. I don't know. Yeah. But I feel positive that if we have to buy it, we're going to pay a lot more than what we're going to get for it. Keep the land. Yes, sir. That was, that was Steve's thought. Okay. Um, again, hopefully we will not be using all of that. Um, the transfer to the general capital outlay fund, you see the money back going back. Uh, we put money back into the general fund every year because to operate, we don't get anything from June to December, or at least till late November considerably. State funding sometimes can be slow, so we literally have to borrow from one line item to the other. But that's what that money is, just so y'all see. Uh, Microsoft expense, that is the funds that we have on account based upon previous announcements that we hope to work for for additional infrastructure in the future for them. Law library, that's paid by the attorneys. Uh, we are just the fiduciary agent for that. You have the Quails Hollow Project which we are now having to have our meetings virtually, Ms. Lundy, as you know, and uh, do that. Uh, Virginia's Retreat, we are the physical agent for them. Um, and we, they are looking at doing uh, the Civil Rights and Education Heritage Trail. They're looking at a major expansion of that this year uh, using uh, grant funds and their own funds that they've collected over the years. So that is... Uh, besides the 4,000, I think 4,500 we would put in there every year, the remainder is grant funds and others. Um, VGA, TransTech, uh, that again is where the fiscal agent for the localities. The general fund budget is $128,650,365. The fund balance budget is $86,646,561 for a total budget of $215,296,926 with no tax increase. It's not what we had planned. Uh, I know it's not what schools had voted for. Uh, I don't know whether Paul wants to address with you all uh, the other matters, but uh, the lack of funding for general fund increases. Um, they did have an increase in their VRS. They did have an increase in insurance, but they are getting a fairly sizable increase in state reimbursement. Uh, more than what those costs are. So that's why staff did not ha uh, look at those. A couple items that I just want to point out. I don't know anybody in, in the system that's getting charged to make changes as much as we are on schools. But we are told unequivocally that there's a very good chance we will not be starting school as normal in homes or something. We have to plan for distance education. And that's a whole new ball game for our teachers. We have been doing some, but there's been no new instruction except for dual enrollment classes for uh, the students. What they've been doing, the teachers have been engaging the students and trying to keep them their minds active with what was covered in the first three quarters of the year. The Office of Civil Rights, in particular, has to not give new instruction. If you couldn't do it, it would be quality, with internet access, as well as special needs children. And so that, that cut us considerably from being able to reach out. Uh, the whole issue of providing uh, opportunities for students to do distance education it's meaning that we're having a lot of uh, pressure from the state for increasing our outreach for uh, sufficient internet speed connectivity for our students. 
we're looking at uh, having conversations. We are having conversations with the local lines of the electric about how we might be able to create some more drive in hot spots for more rural areas. Right now, we have a lot of support in our towns. There's free Wi Fi access that could provide students who don't have internet for uploading and downloading. Uh, we will have to move to a one to one. We're almost at a one to one laptop to student ratio right now. We have to make sure that there will be that for all students third grade through 12th grade next year. And they'll be doing most all of their work interactively on that. Now, we will be coming back into school. I don't mean to say that we will do everything virtually. Um, please don't get the idea that one person said we're building a new building and all the students are going to be staying at home. That's not the case. But anytime we have, according to the uh, CDC, anytime we have a positive uh, case of the coronavirus, the student will have to shut down school. <clears throat> and we don't know what a second or third grade might look like. So that's that's changing our our whole way of doing business considerably. Um, we are still focusing on the whole idea of career academies. We know that the, the primary focus of the new building will be in looking at getting those six career academies in place. And so many of the CTE programs, they have to be hands on. <clears throat> so we're working with students on that. Uh, with the state's recommendation, we went back in for next year and we, we cut our ABM by another 50 because the state's very concerned. A lot of parents would say, I'm not sending my children back to school, I'm going to homeschool. At the same time, and we feel like it's just wise to look at cutting back on expectations for budget for the state rather than trying to shortfall. If that doesn't happen, then of course they're best for us to long term as just being conservative. But at the same time, because of the distance education, we also feel like we could have more home persons who are currently homeschooled. We have about 130 homeschool students right now. We feel like there may be more of those that are saying we would like to participate because we're moving to Platform for this learning opportunity, you could include the curriculum, so and you could you could include them, and then if you do, you know they would control their students, their students what they're taking. We would get the ADM for giving them support. So we are we are looking at making that option available just as we did this year with CPD classes. Um, the the other component is that our composite index, which is what is the denomination of how much the county pays as opposed to what the state pays, the composite index went up from 37 to 39. So the state paying less instead of paying 63% down, and up will be looking 61% of the things that are covered in the state as well. We are very appreciative that the county has been supporting our standards beyond the expectations of the standards of quality for many, many years. That's very necessary because standards of quality um, doesn't cover a sufficient amount for what we need to take care of our students. The other thing that is very frustrating to me as a superintendent is the state continues to put on more unfunded mandates that are expected of us as we go along. And with all of this, uh, a perfect example is the uh, uh, feeding program, the school food program. You know, we have operated at a loss ever since March 13th because they only pay us according to the number of students that are served. And they continue to say it's imperative that we offer that service. And that is now being asked to go even through the summer in order to make sure the students are getting the appropriate amount of money, which us for food, which we want to do, but again, we're operating at a loss. The good news is we have to have some virtually in the bank for a while to be able to cover that for a while. So it's it's a it's a difficult time. I was very pleased to hear that uh, in the capital improvement plan we had 
rooms just in case. That's not necessary, but we are going to go ahead with the study. Thank you very much because once we get the new building built, uh, we will need in order to keep the, the high schools that we want to move students to to do the study work on the other. We need to get that all in place so that the high schools, old buildings, are not sitting still. Because if they sit still, they go in. So that will help us be prepared to go ahead and move the place. Um, but uh, we, we work very hard with you and you work with us about the step. Appreciate that. It helped a lot. Uh, us a lot. Uh, the one, the one issue that was difficult that cost us more money is we, because we were able to get our salaries up above what is one of the lower, what was one of the lower in the region. We got several teachers who wanted to come back to us, but they had many years of experience, and that that cost us an additional roughly three hundred thousand dollars because we. Came in on the staff, which they did do, and they were high on the staff. So that's just part of the cost of the business world to get their students in touch. So we're, we're working this year. Actually, as you know, our, uh, because of homeschool, because of loss of persons, uh, we have decreased our overall student population over the last 11 years by roughly 10%. And so we are taking a very good look at our classroom size ratios now and making the appropriate adjustments for those so that um, in some areas, particularly at JC, which has significant costs, we have some pretty small classrooms. We're going to be making some adjustments. There is a counter argument to that that is the school system that is in the greatest need for. The, the new students and the extra work that needs to be done, and many people feel like the smaller classroom the more attention to get given. But we need to we need to work with you know, responsible issues as well. So we are looking at those adjustments. Uh, they will be going up this year, class sizes, and um, that that will remain to be seen what impact that has on us. Um, the other. The other component of that, which you need to know, is that all of our employees, except for some of our uh, <coughs> some of our cafeteria staff, have been on contracting service for five hours. And so, uh, bus drivers and aides, in particular, that have not been used, were still under contract. We did not have a policy that would look at how they weren't being used, they were not being paid for furlough. So we are looking at putting in language in the contracts for some of them that if you're not working and you can't afford to pay it, then you will have that policy in place for you. And that we feel like that's just responsible to our committees. As far as teachers and most other employees, uh, administrators, teachers, and so forth. There has been more work for this shift. And if we go to more online learning, that means that teachers are basically teaching every child individually as opposed to a classroom for the students. So that's that's more work for the teachers to work with. So uh, that's just what we're facing, and we appreciate this. Of course, we the America shut down by the state. Have it dramatically impact your budget in one one way, positive or negative? You know, well, I will I will have to say that there was this pretty dramatic attempt at the state level with significant reduced revenues to try to keep our schools from getting hit as hard as other areas. We did have a, a, a decrease. We saw some decreases. We saw some increases in other areas. Overall, for Mecklenburg, as Wayne stated, we were, we were receiving at the end of the year for next year, next year, a little bit over a million dollars, with some increases that helped support some of the areas that we were working with. Um, we were looking at the 2% increase for teachers. That obviously was taken out. We were looking at the, uh, 
decrease in the student counselor ratio because of so much more mental health issues that you have to deal with, as well as a lot of career issues. The state was promoting the idea that we would have a ratio of 250 students per counselor and center of quality. That got cut out of the budget entirely for now. So that was a hit. Um, other than that, we have fared in Mecklenburg much better off than some of the surrounding counties. I don't run for counties, but run for overall, run for $2 million. So I think we've done really well. And that, the additional funds was even taking into account the uh, decreasing amount that the state gives us with the uh, composite index. Um, we did, we're also able to do one other thing for the schools. Last year, we still had to take out 585000 from our reserves to fund the debt service. On the last of the $40 million we got uh, for the 2019 bond, we were able to fully fund that, so we're not taking any reserves to pay debt service this year. Paul, a question. I, I know uh, you and your staff and your <laughs> teachers are uh, just in distant, distant learning y'all are doing with the kids now. Um, what, what about the kids? I mean, what percentage is uh, um, 100% of the kids doing that part of getting, uh, are you may, be able to make contact with all the kids? We, we are upgrading our technologies to make that easier on teachers to be able to respond. Um, we have data that suggests about 25 to 30 percent of our students do not have adequate internet access in the county right now. That makes it very difficult for them. We have put Wi-Fi in on all of our buildings so that our students could drive up to the parking lot of the building, even if the building is closed, and be able to have internet access. The libraries have done the same thing, and several of the other companies are making uh, access that was only uh, cost uh, available to students for free. But I think your question is specifically addressing the issue of how many of the students are taking advantage of it. And and that that is is very um, we have asked our teachers to be in touch direct contact one way or another with every student that they serve at least twice a week and to keep up with those who they're not getting in touch with. And we're having some teachers that are getting in touch with um, 98%. So we have others that are only getting, are able to get in touch or not getting response, I should say. They're trying to get in touch, but others are only having a response from 40%. And, and that's that's a significant issue because the state holds us responsible whether the parents participate in that or not. Yeah, I would think the students and the teachers, I mean, students and their parents got to have some initiative because if you got 15, 20 percent of the day, 30 percent is not getting anything, then you really, you, if, when you come back together, you, that's another challenge in itself. Well, uh, yes, we will be adjusting the schedule for the high school, you know, then a four by four block, so that every semester they have a series of four classes and the following classes. For following semester for, for like a college day. We've had that for years. Um, we're going to have to adjust that because of all the changes. They're going to need the whole year to be able to get through the changes and things of that nature. So next year will not be a four by four block for the high school. I don't know whether we go beyond that. We think there's some parts of that that prepare us better because we're actually looking at. Um, the whole idea of the distance learning, we will schedule, do the master schedule for the two high schools together so that the teacher is teaching a dual enrollment class that partly can teach the same for those students as the blue stuff as well. And that will, that will help us in the merging process for the overall part. Getting back to your question about parent participation, even the school lunch part, we know this. We've got a huge number of students on free or reduced lunch. When we said, come to the elementary school to pick those lunches up, we're not getting near the number of students that are participating in that that, uh, that should. Um, and it's just a matter of 
on somebody taking the time to go. You, you, you see that in there, but they have to have the initiative. To well, it's the distance thing, too. You know, if you live five miles from the elementary school, it's not cost effective really to go down there and pick up a lunch with one child if you, you know, your parents or whatever, it just, you know, there's so, there's so many parts to all of those time management. And going back to what, what to, uh, you know, the, the teacher stays in contact with me, his uh, age teacher. And if I don't respond to her, she has made mention that Ms. Dalton or somebody from the office will be contacting me. So it, there is a backup uh, if the teacher's not getting uh, response out of the student. There is a backup, is what I found. Jump it again. <laughs> Are we laughing? Now, Paul, uh, I did have one concern. You're telling me that if one student in the school tests positive, the whole school is closed? Yeah. I mean, what are the odds of that? Like 100%? <laughs> I would say. And, and what the other part that we don't know, and this is where March 13th was not surprised, we were prepared for a two week shutdown if we had a case. But when the governor came in and shut down everything, then that took it out of our hands. We don't know looking in the future how much the state will determine for the whole state as opposed to individual areas of the state. And give us the control on day to say, well, we haven't had any. Right. And, and I think part of that is because there were not adequate testing opportunities, so that we would know. You know I don't know how much more the testing opportunities will come along. I don't know if our school nurses will have the option to be trained to do the testing or responsibility to do the testing. Those are unknowns that we still have to work on. Uh, the health department has spoken to me about testing. Uh, they'd like to do some. Um, they're not sure on cost and logistics and everything else, so that's something that probably will come forward. But even then, they're looking at having it set up so you would have to have a doctor's excuse to do it, basically an appointment. Um, and those would be the only people that would be allowed to take the test. So it's still going to be somewhat uh, selective. And then whether we have the fast test, which was can be completed in an hour or two, or we have to send it off, and that can be anywhere from one to three days on a good set. Uh, we've had them come back 13 days later. So just testing, I'm not sure either how, how you do that because there's not enough labs to take care of the test to do them in a timely manner. And there's not really, they need a five-minute test, not a three-hour test, which is what the earliest is right now that they're looking at. And there are places like Europe, they're looking at different tests like that. Mr. Mickelson, in, in the future with this pandemic that we are experiencing right now, what is the likelihood that once we get started back regularly, that this will push us into a year-round operation? It's pretty likely. I would say that there have been schools along the way that have moved to a year-round schedule. Um, we haven't had a conversation about that yet, but I do hear around the state more schools are looking at a year-round schedule just because it gives you more time along the way to build up consistency going when you have on and off and on and off kinds of things going on. And so uh, that's that's not a conversation that we have had, but we will likely be looking at what that means. Is that the, the concept that, that I've been hearing about where um, the students they go to a group goes to school for nine weeks and then they nine weeks off or something. No, they're, weeks. What, they're, they're two separate issues. They were, they're impactful of each other. Um, according to our governor's re entry into normality, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> He has, a, he has a five phase concept. And he's put some general timelines on each phase. 
three weeks for the first phase, ten weeks for the second phase, how many people can get together in one place. The, the general distance from that right now, I think we don't even get into the third phase until we would be starting school again. And that conversation is about no more than 50 people gathering in one facility at a time. Well, we don't have a facility in school that's made for 50, less than 50 people, less than 100 people. So that's why we're saying the distance education component gets to be very important. And it's, but some are looking at the idea of saying, okay, half the students come in the morning, and then another set comes in the afternoon, and another set might come the next day and try to break it up in that way. I don't know how you do instruction that way right. and get through all the material. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, what we're looking at is to try to make available the best way possible plans for distance education and, and keeping them moving in that direction the best way. If you also have to figure if you're going to bus them, that you know, you're going to have that six foot rule on a bus. You're suddenly cutting down on the number of students that you can bus at one time. You know, several, you're looking at sending buses back two or three times and driving again. That's trying to buses back. It's just it it that far. This is back in between bus rounds. You know, it's uh, a nightmare. Right. But there are also, too, you're speaking of the, the Wi Fi issue and the internet issue. Um, I know summer school, uh, some of the kids are being. Given the hotspots, are there still issues where they're running into places where even the hotspots won't work? Absolutely. That's definitely we we have planned for the hotspots we're looking at are called Kajis. And we have we're purchasing some Kajis for some students that we can make available as we put the laptops out and find out that they need that. Um, but there are significant areas of the county. That even that would not pick up a signal. We're not looking necessarily that they have strong enough signal to to download the classroom activity for the teachers teaching and you just watching it on video like we just did this. That's we don't need to get to that level where they can stream, but we do need to be able to get to a level where they can download material and be able to do the material and then turn around and download that. All of our textbooks are now available to be placed on the laptop so they have access to all the textbooks. But we've got to keep instruction going and support for the learning. Now, James, uh, see you can download the textbook. You can ask But this teacher, she went, downloaded, printed, and brought it to his mother's office and went above and beyond all things. And we could, he even came up here and tried to, we could have my sharks and what's wrong, but we could download this teacher just immediately. I mean, the next day, I don't know how she did it, she brought it into his mother's office, she knew it right or wrong. And I don't have resolve until we get that vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they for some, this this morning where they say they'll have a billion doses of that vaccine possibly by January. By when? January. <laughs> okay, so thank you for the comment and from our superintendent. So we can start in our reports. Our next step, Wayne, is. Well, I've also I've submitted to you all the capital improvement plan. That was on another one of the. Um, and those are just our long term five year. Uh, monies. This I did include for the schools their entire request on all the future years, including what would be done to the existing elementaries. I don't think we'll have to spend that. That's why I include it, just because it's there so that you can see uh, based on I sent out last week. I think I sent that out to the entire committee, their CIP program. Uh, so um, or to the entire board, y'all have that. What staff is recommending, we have prepared Today's the budget session. We have prepared the advertisement, half-page ads, uh, and we're waiting. If you all are in agreement with what's been proposed by the county, uh, Jenny will hit the send button, and this will go to the papers for us to advertise this Wednesday. Uh, we're proposing next, the following Wednesday, the 20th, 
to have a public hearing. Uh, again, virtual. We'll receive comments online and tell you all those. Uh, and then an adoption on either the 27th or 28th. I was hoping 27th because I know Paul didn't have to get there. They've got to prove it also. So they can go out to contracts. We try to get contracts done by June 1st. But of course, you'll be able to probably pre-print them because we'll know what, what monies are coming um, as we move through this. Um, this is, uh, I want to thank Ed, Sandra, Judy, uh, staff, Jenny, and uh, uh, Nancy for all their help. Uh, this has been Paul, his staff, uh, Christy, Brian. Uh, it's been a, a train in different budget than we've ever had. We usually know something as we're going in. And this one, about the time we thought we knew what was going on, we just threw it out the door and start all over again. So, huh? Well, we try, sir. We've got a few years' experience. <laughs> yeah, but usually you kind of drive everybody crazy when you do a bunch of At least they have to complain about it. It's the distance. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've tried to distance it. Yeah. I've tried to be a, a nicer, kindler person. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, Sometimes it don't work. Yeah. I think the distance probably was the main thing. Uh, but we, 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 these numbers are conservative. I hope that we have a lot more money left over by the end of the year than what we propose. We don't know. I don't think anyone does anywhere. Uh, this is get back, uh, take your best shot at it, and just, just hope it comes out. Luckily, some of the income numbers for us aren't as affected as most people. We have cut back our percentages on the income for collections, both real estate and personal property. Um, we have cut back by about a third our sales tax revenue estimates uh, we got those in march they looked high we thought but still they sent us some back two weeks ago they were the same number which we thought was really really high then okay uh so we cut that back by a third uh the state said we should have 5.9 million we estimated 3.8 um Luckily, we're not driven off of meals and lodging taxes like our towns. They're going to be like South Hill and Clarksville will be greatly impacted on that because that's one of their large revenue sources. Um, we, uh, we, we have our transit occupancy tax, but that's for rentals of houses. I don't really think that's going to change. I think people are going to come to the lakes, stay in a house. That's their group that they're around anyhow. Uh, and by summer, which is our busy months, people are going to be stir crazy, and I'm thinking those are going to continue as they have. Uh, but we have cut back on several other different miscellaneous items. Um, right now, building inspection is doing well. Permits are going through the roof, but we don't know where that's going to be in six months based upon, as I said, today's job report. Um, one of the places where that's really affecting is commercial real estate, which and we don't have as much of as the Richmond area, Chesterfield, those areas are going to get hit. Uh, you know, you're going to see who needs an office building when they figured out they can work at home with everybody. So that's going to really affect the commercial real estate market. I think Would you agree, Ed? Uh, so we don't have that issue as much. So in a lot of ways, we're, we're better off than a lot of other communities. Uh, when you start reading across the board, where counties are counting on getting, instead of getting an extra 60 million, they're looking at losing 60 million from their existing. You know, those are the Henricos and Chesterfields that are looking at that. So we've been very blessed that we're not relying on some of those same tax revenues that they are. Um, we hope to, man. We always hope to. We never have in the past that that's what we use, for example, to save money to pay for schools. I, I would recommend no, ma'am, because unless you're going to do it with everybody. Right. I, I'd have an issue with it because, for one thing, you might this year might still turn out to be good, but I don't know how long this is going to last. And you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, several, a lot of people have, ma'am, but I don't know that we can, you know. I, I don't know that I can just say that's the most important thing for our county. Okay, ma'am, I'll go with that. Uh, a lot of important things in the county. Right now, staff would not be recommended. So. so we would need the board 
to approve the uh, budget adoption schedule, determining whether you wanted the 27th or 28th. We would hope the 27th and give Paul another day to hopefully get his board together. Before yeah, before that. Before that. Before you before can have it on the weekend. <laughs> you know. What's the day? Extra day. This is the fastest we can do it by law. We have to, it has to sit for seven days from the time it's advertised to you can have the public hearing. And by law, you must wait seven days, even if you're not having a tax increase for that. I will tell you, income streams did not come up the way we planned. Um, we did the reassessment. We got less than 1% increase. Um, so when you look at that, we had hoped to have much higher. So we would have had to advertise that separately. We didn't get that. Uh, so we had less than a 1% increase from a reassessment. Hopefully, in some ways, that will help us. Our, our values aren't going to be overinflated. Uh, some localities could end up, their real estate market was very hot, and that could cool also and cut them in other ways. So we're trying to be as conservative as possible with our revenue estimates. But we would need y'all to vote to take this to public hearing. Well, Chairman, uh, budget finance, you need a motion to yeah. uh, approve this report. Yeah. So move. Okay, but you have a motion that we approve this um, budget before we have for public dear. All those favor my motion. That's not my whole time by. Uh-huh. So uh, opposed. I have carried. So this be ready for um, public dealing. Okay. Now you have to approve the uh, schedule for. Okay. You could give that schedule again. Schedule would be to advertise it uh, this Wednesday, the thirteenth. Public hearing on the 20th and budget adoption the following Wednesday on the 27th. I have a motion to sign in adopting that schedule. So we have a motion to adopt the schedule that we just mentioned. All those in favor of my motion, I've been on my vote sign of aye. Aye. Uh, All opposed, I have to carry. Okay. Stay in there, Wayne. No, sir. Thank you all for all your uh, putting up with us. Uh, uh, and again, thanks for staff for all their work. Uh, Sandra and Ed. Uh, what do we have to put up with? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Wayne and staff, for a new way of doing things, a kind of quick way of doing things, but hope it turn out good at the end. I just think that if this did not hit us like in November through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Can you imagine uh, the, the retailers like, you know, the, Toys, everything you think yep. about, all that, and then being closed in the house. Right, at least you know it can't hit us. We could go outside, and still walk around, and meet people on the street, or you know, if it fit twenty degrees outside, I mean, everybody would have been just locked inside. Yeah. So I mean, thankful little small little things that uh, we don't think about. 